Welcome another episode on the menstruation taking into consideration the cone. Now we want to see how we can develop a cone from the sector of a circle. We know a sector is just a region that is bounded by two radius and an arc. The arc AB and the radius OA and OB. When enclosed, that gives us the sector. Now, if this sector is uh, taken out, don't forget this sector we are seeing here with the angle being theta is a minor sector, the smaller sector based on the smaller arc. If it is removed, it can be folded to form a cone in this form. Don't forget the major arc will also form a major sector. If this is removed, this becomes a major sector that could also be formed or folded to form the same cone. And in forming that, the radius of the cone becomes the slant height. So the slant height and the radius is going to be the same because it's formed from here. Then the length of the arc becomes the circumference of the base. You know, the base here is going to be a circle. So this length of the arc will be folded to form the circumference of the base. Don't forget the cone formed from a sector is a hollow cone, meaning there is a hole. There is no circle attached to it. So this is what we are going to see. We want to see how we can relate the small r, the capital R, and the L and the R together. But before then, let's take something like this. We can see this is a circle with our sector with the red lines. So if we take out this minor sector, we can use it to form a cone. Let's try and see. So you can see this is our sector. So if you remember, this is the radius. So when I fold this, if the edge meet, when they are joined together, you see that we form a cone. It's a cone but hollow. Hollow simply means that nothing is covering it. So we can see that the circular part is removed. So this is going to be the slant height. Now the slant height is now becoming uh, is was the radius. So this is for the minor. So this is the cone. So this is what we are seeing here, formed from this sector. So you can see that the radius from here become the slant height. Now in the case of the major sector, you know we take away the minor. We can also fold which is very easy. So this is a cone, right? We can see that it's hollow. So this is also a cone, whereby the radius, which we have here, is also becoming the slant height. I believe you get it. All right, let's make what we are seeing together. I did mention that the length of the arc AB So the length of arc AB equals to the circumference of the base equals to the circumference the base of this. So what is the, the formula for finding the length of an arc? It is theta out of 360 times what? 2 pi R and the R here is a capital R equals to the circumference of a circle is 2 pi or R, small r, which is a radius here. And if you check carefully, you can see that we are having pi and pi being common, 2 and 2 being common. So if we divide through by that, this will cancel this, then R will be equals to theta over 360 times the capital R. So this is the relation between the bigger radius and the smaller radius of the cone. If I want to find the radius, I will use this. Definitely one of the radius will be given in the question. Either this will be provided or this will be provided. The angle subtended by the arc will also be given. Then we can provide the relation between the two. I believe you get it? Good. Now, since this is a hollow cylinder, a hollow cone. 
it means that the total surface area will be just the kef surface area. Remember our tutorial we had how to derive the kef surface area of a cone. So if this is just the kef surface area, the whole of this is formed from the sector. So we can also say that the area of the sector is the same as the curved surface area or better still the total surface area so this is just one way by which we get our r we can also make it this way area of sector a b which is the minus sector a b will be equals to the curved surface area or let's just say total surface area of the cone the total surface area is the same as the curved surface area in this case because it's a hollow cone so how do you find the area of a sector we know it is theta over 360 times pi r square and the r is the capital one of the sector equals to total surface area is pi r l you remember the l we see is the same as what the radius of the sector so I will use here as also R. So you can see, if I divide by pi pi, the pi will cancel. If I divide by capital R, capital R, the R will reduce. So I'll be left with only R equals to theta out of 360 times only R. So you can see in the two cases, we can be able to find the radius of the cone when the radius of the sector and the angle subtended is given. I guess the tutorial into finding the base radius of the cone formed from the sector. Remember, if we use the major sector, we are not going to rely on this angle because this angle is just smaller portion of the 360. So the other angle is going to be 360 minus this given angle. I guess you get it. Because if we are using this, there is nothing here. So the angle form is going to be the reflex angle here, which will be the smaller angle from 360. That will be the angle that this major sector is forming. So take note, if it is a major sector that is folded, then the angle, which is the reflex angle, 360 minus theta, will be the one that will be placed in place of what? Theta. I guess you get it. Beautiful. In the next episode, which will be the part uh, three of this, is going to be a question based on this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and comment. Bye bye.